Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next conversation is with Tarek Kayumi. He's a uh, filmmaker who is uh, wor- uh, premiering, uh, world premiering his film, Black Kite, at the Toronto International Film Festival. And we talk a lot about uh, some, some, some pretty engaging, interesting things all around the act of kite flying. This is a film about oppression and change and seismic political shifts. It's about a, a father and daughter and the, the relationship that they have uh, as they uh, grow, uh, I guess you could say grow up together and as they play together. This is a, f- a film all about kites and what they actually mean and, re- and, and what the actually act of kite flying means in a country that was uh, at the time going through and still is some pretty pretty intense political changes and shifts. Uh, Tarek calls uh, uh, kite flying, he, he compares it to playing video games. I mean, we talk about, again, a little bit about everything. We talk about the sense of play and how important that is in, in, in our growth, uh, not only as individuals, but as communities and as cultures. We talk about hope and, and, and um, uh, the other. We talk about freedom, of course, and choice and responsibility. And believe it or not, we, we get into Alexander the Great as well. Coming right up, uh, a very interesting conversation and a wonderful film uh, by Tarek Kayumi called Black Kite. Don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and 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 uh, speaking and face-to-face-live.ca as well for, for all of my uh, interviews, well over 300 interviews now and, and now the focus on the Toronto International Film Festival, which I'm pretty excited about. And also rabble.ca for uh, more information there about uh, writing and podcasting and vlogging about all things social and political. Coming right up, Tarek Kayumi and Black Kite. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by another very special guest uh, here with us today. Uh, He's a filmmaker. Tarek Kayumi is here with us today to talk about his new film that's going to be premiering at the Toronto International Film Festival called Black Kite. Tarek, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So we're talking about a world premiere are, are you nervous? Uh, yes, very nervous. <laughs> and, and, Would and, you like me to tell you how nervous I am? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, does it include shots of tequila, Tarek, is the question. I, I'm just... uh, yes, so that includes uh, shots. I, I mean, uh, we just got, uh, we just sent our DCP today. So it was, um, uh, it, 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 it's just, I think the nervousness is, is it going to play? Right. That's one of the things that I'm like wondering. And then uh, if if it plays, then uh, it's okay. It's and by play, and by some people will like it, some people won't. Right. I don't mind that. And that, that's that I'm not nervous about. Right. But I'm worried about like the technical stuff more. I guess. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So yeah. you're you're you, so once it's rolling and the, and then we get through the the actual screening and it's Q and A, you're gonna be you're gonna be at home. I'll, I'll be okay. I, I, I'll be ner- I'll be nervous because you know just uh, you know uh, talking to a whole bunch of people, not used to that. Of course, I'll have my nerves will be going kind of yeah. wonky. Yes, I bet. But, uh, I bet. But uh, but in terms of like like in in like uh, that to have a, an audience for a film like Black Kite. It, it, is wonderful, and whether or not they like it, that's not up to me. Uh, and whether they have different uh, what they see in the film, and if there's if if there's if people are are moved by it and uh, good or bad, and they talk about it, uh, that's the kind of film film that I like, and that's the kind of film I, uh, uh, that I hope that I've made. Well, I well, if, if for what it's worth, I think it is a, a beautiful story and a remarkable film, and and so right out of the gate, congratulations, and and Thank on completing the film and and getting it to the festival, and all of that. 
Um, and and I thoroughly enjoyed it on a, on a variety of levels. And I think I think people are going to have plenty to talk about. I mean, but can, can we just can we, so based on true events? Um, can you tell us, can you give our listeners a little bit of context, uh, uh, you know, without giving too much away uh, uh, about the story and the film itself? Um, yes. So back in, uh, I, was at, I was at creative writing at UBC uh, uh, when I was an undergrad, and I was looking for story ideas and uh, newspaper articles, and I would always keep them. And I, get, I came on this article about how the Taliban had banned kite. Hmm. And it was really intriguing for a variety of reasons, but specifically that I thought there's all these movies that I think everybody enjoys where, uh, uh, you know, they have things banned like music or uh, uh, books or science or whatever you may have. And, and all these things are... are, are uh, they can be political in nature, right? And they can they can send a certain message, but I thought kite flying. I mean, that's it's really a, a play. It, it, there's nothing really you know a, a political about it. Right. There's nothing uh, hidden about it. Well, it's something. It's, so some, thought, it's, it's something everybody's yeah. done, and it's something that kids do. I mean, it's 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 play. It's it's enjoying the outdoors. How how can something so, so utterly simple and beautiful be political, and yet seemingly it is? And, and yeah, it was and it was banned. So that was uh, where the story came from, and that was uh, I guess that's that, yeah, that was the inception of that idea. And so, so you read the article, did you, did you do the research? Did you have enough familiarity already with the issue to sort of say, okay, this, this is good, I'm, I'm in, now, now, now we got to go to the next level of research. Did you go out and buy a kite, Tarek, is the question I'm wondering. Well, about. I, 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 you know, I, I, uh, uh, I was born in Afghanistan, so from a young age, it was something that, and, and people would say, what is it like for Afghan uh, children? It's like video games. It's it's, right. it's, it's, a, it's very interactive, um, right. and uh, you uh, you're they're colorful. You have a, you kind of um, uh, lose yourself. It feels like you're flying, and it's a large part of the culture there. So so that part of it I didn't have to research. Um, and in the film, Arians left for kites. And, like my own love for kites, and um, and, and and beyond that, yes, I I was like, is the story true? And then I, I researched, and I found more articles about this, and, and furthermore, once I started writing it, the way it it, it seemed unfair to just concentrate on just the Taliban portion. Right. of the story, because it seemed like, as I wrote the story, it was like, the short story, uh, it was like, it was, it, was, it, was, it was more than that. It was just the tip of the iceberg. And I got more and more into it, and that's when the research came in of, of, uh, of uh, a whole life lived in the last 50 years of Afghanistan's chaotic history, and, and the idea that... Uh, what if everything stands in this person's way of 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 you know, of, of of his passion? Is this Tarek? Is this a, is this a film about ultimately about about freedom? I mean, is that just a, is that an oversimplification of what you're trying? I mean, obviously, you're telling this story through the the lens of one family, of one very intimate family, a beautiful relationship between father and son. We've got. I love the way you mix footage with animation to, I love the passage of time and, and as you say, over 50 years. And, and is, 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 is that an oversimplification? Is, is it about freedom? Is it about political freedom? Is it about personal freedom? It's, 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 it's about anything you say. And I think, I think you'll see, um, uh, I, I, I think that's a strong theme in it. Um, I guess when I was writing it, I was like, for me, I was like, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, it's about anarchism. I was like, you know, he's never happy under anyone, you know, he just 
character is never happy. He wants absolute freedom. Uh, uh, and, and but but you know that's that's too intellectual. You know, it's not, right. it's not you know characters don't. I mean, Arian doesn't think like that. Uh, so again, so my after the, the work is done, uh, uh, as a viewer, and I watch the film. Yeah, it's about personal freedom. Uh, I think you, you hit that nail on the head. It's, it's, um, I can't. I can't imagine. You know, it's really interesting to me that you connect um, kite flying with with playing a video game. I mean, but what a, what what a what a beautiful way to sort of level the playing field. You know, uh, uh, I can't. You know, to, on a certain level, it's to, like to me, it's just a wow video game. Nothing, nothing like a video game. You know, you're outside. You're there's sun. You're you're breathing fresh air and so on. It's a healthy I, video game, right? Yeah, exactly. I love it. It's so it's brilliant. I love it. It's it's remarkable. But I love the way it kind of say, you know kind of says, hey, we're we, you know kids are kids, right? Children are children, and and this and this guy who grows into a, a, a you know he marries in a family. He, he he may, he holds on to that 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 sense of wonder and mystery and that uh he still likes to play video games you know through through his kite later in life and i think i think that's a really beautiful sort of uh subtext for me of 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 the story because so many of us you know i don't know there's a time in our lives where we we kind of lose that we don't have time for kites anymore right got to get to the business of life got to raise a family got to get a job got to get a paycheck exactly exactly and i and, and i think uh, uh, there's a lot of people who watch the film and they connected over that, so the, the, that that sense of um, play and how he tries to pass on, uh, pass that on to his daughter because right. obviously his daughter is she can't go to school she and, you know for various reasons can't you know she's kind of cooped up at home and so. And even though it's dangerous, you really you, you, there's a little thing in there where you do it. Like you gotta, uh, you know, right? And, uh, and 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 I think we all have that. We we we, we all have like uh, that. That thing is universal. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I I, I love the way how. I think it's the father, I think it's Arian's father who says that, uh, you know, maybe raises the question about how, how is it that the most important thing in life can be made of bamboo, paper, and glue? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What's, what's it like? What, I mean, did you shoot in Afghanistan? Yes. So, yes, we shot there. And, um, uh, and what's, uh, what's it, what's it like there? Or yeah, well, what's it, it like what's it, I guess, I mean, how, I'm not sure how long you've been living uh, here. You say you, you, you went to school at UBC and so on. You're currently, you're, I think you're currently calling from Vancouver. Um, what, what's it like to live under that kind of an oppre- of, of oppression where uh, I've got to think about flying a kite and what the implications are going to be for me and my family? Um, that's, I, I guess, uh, that's what I try to capture in the film mm. with uh, uh, Arian's uh, character, um, and I, and I think he's the kind of guy who wouldn't normally break any laws, would follow everything. Right, right. But um, I think when he sees his daughter and the way she she's she's been. Um, marginalized and to give her a sense of childhood uh he goes for it right um i would guess i mean i i was lucky enough to have grown up in in, in canada in vancouver i spent the, the, the first six years of my life in, in afghanistan and we came over we're refugees and and we're two years on the road and then we ended up in canada which was a fantastic happy coincidence um uh, and as a Canadian, um, my life has been different, but I sure. did go back to Afghanistan and I lived there for four years. Um, uh, but that was 2011 to 2015. So, um, different circumstances there. People have a lot more personal freedom. Mm. Um, but I do remember personally, 
when the uh, when the Russians came in and, and the communists had taken over, and I was um, I was in grade one, and my father had gone to join um, uh, the Mujahideen mm-hmm. in in in, in, pa- in Pakistan. He was a doctor, so he uh, uh, he went to join them, and he he was doing uh, uh, he was their doctor there, and. Uh, we, I, uh, they, because they kind of threatened him, and, and and so what happened was they used to call me into the the the, the, the principal's office, mm-hmm. and they, the principal and my teacher, and there's some other people in the room, and they would ask me where my father was, and I remember at home they had taught me to say. Um, uh, my father is a traitor. He ran away. Yeah. And so I was like a young kid, but I gave him that answer. And then they kind of were like, okay, satisfied with it. They would, they would let me go back to the classroom. But, uh, yeah, living, uh, so I do have a little bit of, um, experience living in an sure. environment where, uh, you have to, it's all about lies and you have to pretend and you have to, um, you have to watch out for things. Well, what what I love, you know, Tarek, what I love about your film is it's a beautiful story about a, about a family, about love, about relationship, the the the, the in- intimacy between father and son, and 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 then father and daughter is. I mean, you communicate it in such a beautiful way. And um, well, thank you. Yeah, and and yet, if we step back and 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 start to sort of peel back some of the layers, this is an. In- this is a political film. It's 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 about international development. It's about free the free market. It's about you know personal freedom. It's about about uh, you know uh, global freedom. I mean, we, we, there, there's a long list here, right? And and I'm I just I love that kind of uh, uh, hmm. I guess maybe you could say almost implied intentionality. You know, here you said it. You read an article. You want to you want to make this film, and you end up making this this really. Uh, remarkable uh, uh, story that 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 is just working on so many levels. Wow! Uh, thank you for that. I, I, I um, uh, like for me, you know, your ter- comments, yeah, you're, you're, assessment. absolutely, Tarek, you're you're, you're welcome. I mean, like just for me alone, you know, and maybe maybe uh, uh, I, I had a conversation earlier with with Brian O'Malley about his film, The The Lodgers, and I it's a horror film and, and psychological horror, and I'm not a, I'm not a horror film buff, or uh, you know, I'm certainly not um, into horror film in 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 a, in a deep and intimate way. But but the film is you 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 watch this film, you see the story, and you start to look for connections, and and they're just all there. And Brian's like, oh, you know, David, you you need to you need to maybe we need to get the writer in here. And wow, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> and it's just kind of interesting. Like to me, the the light bulb, for instance, you know, and and crushing the glass and putting that into the string is just such a beautiful uh, metaphor uh, for 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 so many things. Uh, is 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 that is that is that something that 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 everyone does in in Afghanistan? That that that's how you that's how you make string that isn't going to break. Yeah, I mean, this is. <laughs> I remember uh, watching my older uncle make uh, the string. Uh, and and I love your uh, the, the, that you see a metaphor in that. It's so beautiful. I, <laughs> I definitely didn't see the metaphor making it, uh, <laughs> but it's it's wonderful that, that you see that. And uh, I yeah. So when I was a little kid, I uh, I, I remember everyone was uh, really obsessed with uh, making the string that cuts the best and having secret ingredients. Right. You could buy it from the store, but it wasn't right. as good as if you made it yourself. Sure, yeah. And I remember my uncle, like, uh, you know, this is, you know, other pe- people use this, but we use this. And uh, I'm sure everyone uses it, but everyone thinks that it's unique to, the, to their tradition or the way they do it. And they have the edge. Um, Have you have you ever actually have you ever actually gone through the process of breaking up the crushing the light bulb and I mean it looks like I mean you you got into it a little bit in the film but it looks like a pretty complicated process. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to help my uncle a little bit when he was doing stuff like that, and 
yeah, there's the, 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 there's a kind of um, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, it, back when I was a kid, it was like magic. Right. It was like it was like making a creating a potion of some kind, crushing the glass, uh, ad, adding this or that into it to to um, it was technology, right? It was yeah. Technology yeah. It was it was it was, uh, it was it was that and and. Uh, and, 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 and then your skill level at uh, at flying and, and, and all, the, all those things play together. But but that that always st- uh, st- uh, stood out to me that that the magic of making that potion or the you know the magic elixir for the string and yeah. The magic elixir is kind of cool for the string, and yeah. I love it's so charming to me that you know everyone has like the secret ingredient, you know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Ours is going to be just a little bit better than theirs. Um, the way you use archival footage is this: Are you? Are you? Uh, it's just such an interesting. It's 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 remarkable and 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 disturbing at points and it, uh, deeply compelling. But uh, is this? Um, hmm. I guess the question I really want to ask you, are, are you hopeful for where things are heading? I mean, it seems to me that that is definitely one of the, one of the messages in the film, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Am I hopeful as to where the whole history? Just where, where things are heading, you know? I mean, In Afghanistan? Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, the, boy. This is, this is a question that uh, keeps uh, my family... And I'm sure other Afghans up um, at night. I bet. It, I bet it does. It, and it, it, it's it's interesting um, in making this film. There's a lot of hope in it, hmm. but obviously there's a downward trajectory sure. overall. Sure. Sure. Um, and has it has it gotten better? I'm not sure. It's just I remain hopeful, and I do believe that uh, uh, the Afghans have been through a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would be really, really nice if they were given a chance to live uh, uh, peaceful lives like many other people on, on the planet. But then I also see it being um, this piece on a chessboard mm. And uh, I, I, uh, geopolitically important, maybe because of its position in, in the heart of Asia, maybe forever. Right. Um, so, is it is it one of those places that we'll see peace? And you look at its past, past if you go even way back, way back, um, it hasn't been too too peaceful. And so, it's it's. Uh, it's it's really, I don't know. I don't know. It's, well, it's it's, uh, it's it's it's. I'd like to be hopeful, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's just I think, and this is another thing that's really sort of bubbled to the surface for me is the, the the simplicity and the beauty of this family living in the midst of all this, you know, complexity and and, and, and horror. That's, that's the one thing. You know? Yeah, that's one thing. When when I went back to Afghanistan in 2011, and uh, my wife uh, Tana who also produced this film. Mm, nice. Uh, we went together, and she... And, uh, I was working at a TV station, and and, and obviously I was, if I was going to live there, we're going to be together, we decided. And, um, and, I, and I had been back there in 2006 for a brief... Uh, you know, briefly, so I knew a little bit of what to expect, but she didn't. And her take on it was, if I had lived in a place where had been there had been thirty years of war, I would have been bitter. I've mm. been, uh, uh, you know, I would I, I would have this uh, bleak outlook. Yeah, I've sure. Had. But when we were there, the people are so. It's the opposite. They're happy. They joke around. They're hopeful. There's there's a lot of humor. There's there's and, and, you know, 80% of the population is only 25. And we work in this TV station, Tolo TV, where there's all these young, smart, well-dressed, educated Afghans who have so much passion for mm. what they're doing. 
Um, and when, when we saw that, we're, you know, uh, we're both totally blown away. Yeah, I, I, I bet. Well, and I think some of the, some of that comes out in the in some of the archival footage as well. The sort of uh, this is wasn't there a line? This is uh, it, it was like this before, or this is what it was like before. I mean, the the, the culture and the clothing and the style and the, and the the the, the, the arts, uh, and and then you know how how things changed a complete hundred and eighty degree shift to the, to the point of outlawing kite running or kite kite flying. Yes, yes, and you, and you see that in. And, and there's still, um, the, in, 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 when you watch Black Kite and you see the, you know, the early history and how it progresses, and if you compare it to what's happening now, um, there's a scene in Kabul. And uh, they're, they're all, it's, it's like right now, the whole 50 years of history that we have in Black kite is was put in a blender and mixed up, and mm. there it is. There's Afghanistan, right? And all those different point of views are fighting each other, for, uh, or you know, are trying to bubble to the surface. So you know, I, yeah. I, I, uh, and maybe we should wrap it up here shortly. Here, Tarek, but there's a great scene with the two men in in, in prison, and uh, I think the line is something to the effect of the dirt. The dirt is from uh, the dirt from our country is like glue. It's it's brought us together. And yes. is that is that you? Is that your hope coming through there, or is that is that is that sort of based on the history of Afghans and 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 Afghani culture and so on, um, or is it your sort of comment on 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 where you hope things are going? I mean, I certainly I work in international development and uh, all through my interviews and so on, my podcasting. I mean, that that seems to be a commonality, man. You know, we're 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 all in this together. You know, and I just I couldn't help but smile at the scene. Uh, yeah, and there's there's. There's the story um, that it plays on. So a lot of Afghans, when they hear that, they may go, hopefully they go, aha. Because there's a story about Alexander the Great, and he uh, uh, had a hard time uh, 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 with the Afghans because they were, he was doing some kind of negotiation with them, and they were all you know, standing united. Right. And so he thought, hmm, what should I do? So he was like, go and bring some dirt from Afghanistan and put it under their feet. And once he did that, they all started fighting amongst each other. So it's a joke. And, and then he got his way. Hmm. And so, but I played on that little... Uh, right, you turn, turned, it on, turned it on its story. head. And I turned it upside down. And yeah, it's, like, it's good. Kind of like, yeah, exactly. You're, you're kind of stuck here. And... Uh, uh, yeah, we're all in it together. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. little tongue in cheek. We all we all walk on the same dirt, man. We all do. We yeah. all do. Well, you know what? I, I don't think I've ever ended an interview, Tarek, uh, on Alexander the Great before, but it might not be a bad place to, to wrap it up. Thank, thanks so much for your time cool, cool. today. Uh, talk, talking with Tariq Kayumi about his new film, Black Kite, uh, world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. A real pleasure uh, to get to know you uh, here today, Tarek. Th- thanks so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much. It was really an absolute pleasure uh, uh, talking to you in your... Um, I'm going to carry that insight about the light bulb <laughs> nice. into the future. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, if you have more stuff like that you saw in the film, I would love to hear it. Oh, and, cool. Well, you know yeah, what? Per- so, maybe, maybe we should do a part two post, uh, post the festival. And I actually, I'm, I'm really hoping really? we get to meet face-to-face. And, and Oh, I'd love, to, I'd love to sit down with you and, and have a chat. It's been wonderful talking to you. That's awesome. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, superb. Thank, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.